Yeah, Sister Catherine Bailey, are you there? Miss Bailey. Yes, I am. All right, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. All right, it's honor to how have you. you. How are I'm you? I'm fine. I can't complain. Uh, it's an honor to have you on. I just want to talk a little bit about you, your background, your profession, uh, and all the things that come with the territory, if you don't mind. Could you uh, state okay. your name and your title and where you work? Yes, my name is Catherine Bentley, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Theater and Dance at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville, Illinois. How long have you been teaching at uh, SIUE? I am uh, going into my sixth year full-time. I was there two years before as an adjunct professor. Okay. And how will you uh, describe, how, how do you use research and theory in your uh, profession? Well, most recently, um, I started on the line of research of a, of a uh, form of theater done in Suriname, South America, um, that is, uh, it was originated by slaves. Mm. And so for the, over the last two years, I've been heavily researching this form of theater and incorporating it into working with my students. This summer I was able to take students with me to Suriname to conduct research and they actually became research assistants and also uh, helped me to bring the research to life by putting on an uh, actual performance of this traditional art form. So, wow, so you not only do research but you also training people uh, as practitioners as well as professors in this unique field of study you are now engaged in? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. In, mm -hmm. you know, typically in uh, in theater programs, liberal arts theater programs, research is not a focus. Uh, we usually are training young people to uh, take their craft and hone their craft and be able to go out and audition and, and hopefully have a career in the arts that is more performance-based. And because of my my background with the arts and having been involved with the arts all of my life, mm -hmm. <laughs> and also having having um, having realized through my through my artistic career that there are so many ways that I can use my artistry um, it, as you know as a community artist, helping to develop curriculum, um, and also to to use it to um, to teach just about anything. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I exposed my students to the possibilities of using research in their craft and being able to to utilize that to find out about different cultures and incorporating that into what they do as artists. So yes, I am I am uh, hope, hopefully opening opening my students up to a whole other way to look at a degree in theater, not just to, as a way to go out and be performers, but also as a way to go out and, and be researchers and or, uh, help other people, other cultures, um, be able to take you take that the information from those cultures to teach other people about things that are happening in different parts of the world. That's a great answer. Wow. So you, do you see yourself as a scholar and artist or as an academic first and an artist second? And how do you see yourself? Well, I'm an artist first. You know, that's that's just that's my training, that's my background, and um, fortunately, you know, in the, uh, I, fortunately, I'm able. I was able to discover that I also am a scholar and can use my my artistry in my scholarship and vice versa. So, you know, just because of of you know, I never I never saw that I would be a professor. You know, when I was in my undergrad work in theater, that was not the goal. It was, as I said, about theater programs, the liberal arts programs, uh, performance programs are you taught to take your craft and, and go out and audition and perform. And I didn't have a professor who was saying, you know, maybe you should also be looking at research or, you know, maybe you should look at community community building with your artistry. Nobody ever said that to me. So that was just not a, it didn't seem like a, anything that I was, a possibility for me and so I moved to New York and got involved with some uh, community-based programs and curriculum building and that sort of thing with art using my uh, performing to help build curriculum in different neighborhoods then I saw that okay look I'm, I'm still I'm an artist who's, who can also be a community-minded 
person and uh, and also started using scholarship in what I do. So definitely an artist, artist first, who is fortunate enough to have developed the love of research and, and scholarly uh, development. How do you spell this place uh, in South, South America where you do a lot of your research? How do you spell the name? Suriname. Mm-hmm. Suriname is S-U-R-I-N-A-M-E. Okay. Suriname. Okay. And right. how do you find out about this place yourself? How, how do you have to upon this uh, particular place in South America? Well, a few years ago, uh, we have we got a new colleague. I had a new colleague uh, in the uh, at SIUE who started in the anthropology department, uh, Dr. Aminata Cairo, and we met at a mixer that uh, Professor Howard Ramsey, who's head of our Black Studies uh, program at SIUE, he has a mixer every year for the new Black faculty, and so I met. Aminata, and we became fast friends, and uh, she is actually, her family is from Suriname. Uh, she was raised in the Netherlands, because it, Suriname is a, it's a Dutch uh, country. Um, it's now independent, but it was formerly a Dutch, Dutch Guyana. And so uh, Aminata's mother moved to, to uh, the Netherlands before Aminata was born, but her roots are all in Suriname. So we became fast friends, and uh, she told me about her wonderful country that I must say I had not heard of it <laughs> you know I heard of, I'd heard the, I'd heard of the Guyanas and, I, and then when she said Dutch Guyana I was like oh okay and then she said yes it's it's now Suriname after they uh, g- gained their independence it became Suriname so we became friends and she told me about um, this form of theater the the, uh, the the do theater that I referred to earlier she told me about this uh, theater she said nothing is written about it in English everything is in Dutch and so I became very interested, you know, because I'm, I'm very interested in um, uh, uh, slavery theater of North America. I just had never even, you know, thought about the possibilities of looking at the slavery theater that was um, created by enslaved Africans in, in South America. So um, last summer, uh, I, I traveled with her to Suriname and stayed for a few weeks where I was able to interview, uh, do some initial interviews with some of the purveyors of the do theater tradition. And and I taught some classes there to some young people, some acting classes, and had a wonderful couple of weeks there. And then this past summer, we were able to take students there. So my, my initial contact was through was, was uh, through uh, Dr. Cairo uh, Aminata. And um, she's done extensive work there in Suriname. She, her, her thesis was there. And um, She's just done extensive work over the few years there. Mm, wow. So how many summers have you been going back to Suriname with your students? What? Hmm? What did you how say? Many, how many summers have you been going back to Suriname uh, with well, your this, students? Well, this, uh, when I went in uh, 2010, I just went, I didn't take my students. I just went, and I mean, I just went, and it was a uh, really for me just to really explore the country and uh, do some initial interviews and you know, see what it is that I could give back to the community as far as teaching, and, and was able to, you know, like I said, teach a few classes. This past summer, 2011, is when we took students. She took anthropology students, and I took theater students. And um, we plan on doing that again, not this coming summer, but in 2013, we plan on taking students again. Yeah, I was you saying all that. You know, my mind went back to the Harlem Renaissance, and I was thinking about Zora Neale Hurston. We had a, an anthropological, you know, she was an anthropologist as well as a, as a literary artist. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's interesting how you you actually combine the two in your own way yeah. uh, to help, you know, educate and empower your students in the community. Do you see yourself as a trendsetter in your profession or? Uh, you know what? I I do indeed. <laughs> okay. You know, we, we, but it's in the spirit of of Zora Neale Hurston and in the spirit of Catherine Dunham that we do the work that we do. We're mm. trendsetters only because of where we are in in Middle America. You know, in in the the campus that we are, people don't even they don't they can't even see the kind of collaborations that Dr. Tyler and I do. Uh, don't make sense to people. Uh, mm. They make sense to our students. You know, who are just just you know from the experience, their lives are enriched beyond measure for the rest of their life they will never forget this these experiences but um so as far as as trend setting 
you know, I'm, I'm, we are, we're constantly, and I'm, I'm, we're right now working on an article, so I'm researching to see, are there any other programs like this? Are there people that are collaborating, you know, interdisciplinary to take students and, uh, to another country and doing this kind of work? Um, so that I'm, I'm looking for that and for some, hopefully, you know, because I always feel like there's somebody else somewhere doing the same thing that I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. But as far as in this area, the geographic location that I'm in, yes, I do feel like it's unique. It's a unique offering that we're doing. Um, but it's like I said, it's definitely we're not feeling. We don't feel like we've invented anything. In fact, we have actually started a lecture series together at SIUE that is in the spirit of Catherine Dunham lecture series because we are bringing anthropology and the arts together. And uh, we have a class that we teach every every other summer, an interdisciplinary class where Dr. Cairo teaches the African dance, and I teach. Um, theater and it's uh, theater and dance of the African diaspora and so it's all in the spirit of, of those uh, scholar artists, artist scholars that have come before us that see the value in combining the study of people, anthropology and the study of the arts and combining that and to tell, to tell our stories and to uh, remember our traditions and history. That's incredible. And how do you spell Dr. Cairo name? Uh, how you Her first name is Aminata, A, M as in Mary, I, N as in Nancy, A, T, A, last name is Cairo, C, A, I, R, O. Back in Egypt. Okay, I thought that was it. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that's awesome. So, I mean, what are some of the other trends in your profession do you see going on right now? What are the trends? Yeah, well, do you, you see any other trends that kind of uh, are similar to your own, or do you see something that people are currently doing in your profession that's really taking the uh, mm -hmm. academia by storm by any chance? Mm, let's see. Um, no, I think there's a, you know, I think there's a big trend towards multiculturalism, of course. Mm -hmm. That's the whole world, right? Diversity and multiculturalism. Yeah. Of course, the, the arts and theater are not to be left out, but to be left behind in that. You know, I, I have a, at school, I not only have a black theater workshop, but I have a multicultural theater performance workshop as well. <laughs> you know, we, we uh, have different issues than what we, we uh, tackle or approach different issues than what we do in black theater workshop. But that is a big, you know, that's a big trend, you know, and it's one that um, is, is, can, is somewhat laughable, you know, because it's, you know, what, is it, what does it mean? You know, and I think that's what Dr. Cairo and I are, are just really... Um, we, we think a lot about as far as this, this whole trend towards multiculturalism and what does it really mean and, mm -hmm. and and are people really willing to support what that may really mean I don't know what it really means you know I'm constantly in, you know, in touch with my students what does it mean to them because that's what's important you know do they feel like this is a multicultural society um, for the most part my students do but you know there are still a lot of issues that would make me question that but um, for the most part, our, our students uh, feel like they are they're they're pretty savvy and they're pretty they get along with everybody and and still I start questioning them on okay well when is the last time you actually sat at a different table at lunch with somebody that you know was not in your ethnic group or your group of friends or something like that you know when I start questioning mm -hmm. them on that they they start to realize that maybe I'm not as uh, <laughs> cosmopolitan as I thought. Right. But, you know, I think that that definitely is a trend, you know, towards um, multiculturalism and diversity in the theater. And what have been some of the pros of working on an in institutional umbrella? Mm. The pros are the kinds of collaborations that I'm, like, like the ones that I'm able to do with Dr. Cairo. That's definitely, so that's the pro for me. And being able to um, to travel is a yeah. is definitely a, um, a plus for me. Um, and then just uh, because of the, the department that I'm in, I have a lot of freedom as far as what I what I choose to direct, what shows I direct. So that's a pro for me because I'm able to be creative. Um, I'm able to expose my students to a lot of different things that they may not have uh, been exposed to. If, if I wasn't given that kind of creativity, I mean, the kind of creative freedom. So those are definitely, those are definitely pros. What about the cons? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 well, I, you know, I think the cons are that academia is just, it's, it's set up in this, this network of, uh, there are people that 
get to a certain point in their academic career and they are they no longer feel as though they have to be creative, that they have to be open minded, they have to grow. And so they sit there and they, they, they are in the position of making decisions about policy and about um, about who uh, who is to stay amongst faculty, meaning who's who's going to be promoted and given tenure, and, and it's just it's a very um, it can be very stifling in that way if you are if you're not in a in a department that is you, there are some departments that have a harder time with this because you know there are people that are are sitting on their tenure and and uh, and not doing much as far as as far as personal growth. You know, so that that is just definitely a con. It's just one of those things that it's like um, don't really understand if you get up in it. That it's like you know, there there are a bunch of folks that are that are okay with being mediocre, and that's very difficult if you if you are all about uh, growth growth and change. Mm-hmm. That's a good answer. And also, like, what what do you see the future of your profession going? What is the future of of my uh, the profession? Do you mean in academia, or because I, you know, I see myself as not only um, as a professor, but I'm also an artist. You know, so yeah. uh, do you mean as, as an uh, 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 someone in academia who happens to be an artist? That that yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know, see, I, I don't know because I know that for me, the future is. Um, uh, you know, for me, the future is about about collaboration and it's about exposing students to as much as I possibly can in four years. You know, that to me, that's that's where I see myself growing as a professor. Just making sure that I get every one of my uh, uh, students, and I, you know, I, and I want to, you know, I, I want to. It's not just geared towards the African American students, but I do hold a special place in my heart for their growth because it is ex- it, it's it's so very hard for them once they get out of mm-hmm. school as artists uh, uh, African American artists is going to be so hard for them so my my um I do have a special place in my in my heart for for to making sure that their exposure is great and that they are given opportunities and that they and I force them to take advantage of opportunities to travel because I tell all my students across the board no matter color that Travel gets much more difficult when you get out of school. You know, you're not going to be in these programs where you get to go to South America or wherever as easily. So, you know, for me, I just I see I see that as as um, just where I need, where I see myself growing and and being committed to growth in that area. Overall, I, you know, I think that um, you know I think that the trend overall. For for theater, you're saying like for theater programs. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. You're saying for theater programs, or I mean, it could be you know, well, well I, what about your research? I mean, does it has a future yeah. in academia as far as you're concerned, and also the theater? Where does the future yeah. lie with the theater? Well, you know, I'm I'm I guess I'm just you know I I like to think that yes that that this. And maybe it's just because I'm so interested in it, but I think that this, this is the trend. But that's just me, you know. Right. This is the trend, and I know for our university, the trend is international. We have this big push for international exposure uh, for our students and for the university. So I'm on the beginning ends of that, having taken students out of you know to South America next, next year, and then we have a guest artist actually from Suriname in the department right now because of my connections. You know, so he's here for um, the semester putting uh, putting a piece together with our students. And that's highly regarded in our in our university as something that we want to continue to do overall. Next year I think uh, my our dance my dance colleague is bringing in a group from Cuba. I mean so I see that this there's a trend towards in our university towards international exposure and I think that the theater department um is uh, uh, because because of the work that I'm doing and because of the work like that my colleague is doing in Cuba, the theater department has been uh, very instrumental, or, or you know, starting is, is instrumental in getting that, it, you know, in the face of the university. 
that we're committed to it and we're going to actually do it, not just talk about it. You know, because I mean, all the departments out in our university they are often going out of the country. You know, they go to China, they go to Africa. I mean, there's you know, business school goes to China. You know, lots of trips out of the country. In my department, the international exposure was to London, and that's where they go. My colleague takes students maybe every year, every other year if she can. And when they go there, it's about going to see theater. Uh, they see lots of plays, but they are not involved in the community like the work that, that I mean, I said I did. So, you know, I think for me, you know, that's just where my, my goal is to continue the kind of work that we did where we're actually the students are involved in the community. They're actually creating theater with, with the uh, young people in the country. So. I don't know if that answers that, but I mean, it's a great answer. I think it answers, and also I want to know what is the what is the objective of your the, the compilation of your research? Like, what do you plan to do with all this research? Do you plan to? I know you say you're working on articles. Are you planning on publishing a book as well, or what do you what do you, are you planning to do with this research for? Uh, I guess for posterity, as well as for the immediate, yeah. you know, time being. I plan I plan to continue to um, work with the. Uh, the um, do theater consultants that I've been in contact with, and I also may need to do some research in the Netherlands because there's some cons- some of the um, purveyors of this culture are there in the Netherlands. And what I would like to do, well, first I'm going to do some conference presentations. I've been in for some presentations, but also eventually a book, and and also looking at North. Uh, North American slavery, just looking at uh, slavery theater of the of the African diaspora in general. So it's going to take that to me is a few more years of research, you know, because I I have a you know a lot a lot more that I need to look into with that. Mm-hmm. But uh, also bringing you know one of my goals is to bring those young people from Suriname here so that we can create a do theater piece in the states at some point. Um, be great to do that within the next couple of years. That so that's great. one of yeah. that's one of the goals for this as well. That's excellent. And also, I don't know how many uh, theater productions do you direct personally or oversee over over academic year. Oh, I just we, each of my colleagues we just do one one uh, play a year. I'm also over the Black Theater Workshop at SIE. I'm the artistic director for the Black Theater Workshop, so that is also another something that I do that's once a year. So I end up, I guess, it's uh, two. But the Black Theater Workshop, how I've focused on that is that I have a student who is the director. And so I am I am uh, mentoring them, training them as to how to go about putting that piece together. It's our annual annual piece that's done every February. Oh, so, great. yeah, as, as far as the uh, mainstay shows, each of us does one production. I also, with the Black Theater Workshop, have started a touring component of it, which is Right now, but last year, some, a student came to me and just said, we don't want to just do this once a year. We want to have more opportunities to perform. And I said, fine. So we just started meeting every week, once a week, for a couple of hours, and they would bring pieces that they wanted to work on. So last year, we performed at a couple of uh, events on campus. Um, uh, Dr. Ramsey of Black Studies, uh, head of Black Studies, had us come to a couple of his classes and uh, we performed at we performed at the Martin Luther, Martin Luther King luncheon. So you know that's uh, that's something that that the students just decided we want to have that grow, and so we're making that grow this year too. Mm. Sounds excellent. You got any other words of a uh, thought that you want to share with us before we go? Um, well, you know, I think that um, it's it's just. I, I I think it's very important that um, anyone who who has a young person in their life that is artistic and um, and that is and that their artistry is just so much a part of them. I would say to encourage that and to know that there are ways that you can support yourself as artists. And going to college is is extremely necessary of course people you know I have parents they're like well what are they going to do with a theater degree Mm -hmm. because they see people all the time who are on TV and in the movies who've never gone to school and I you know my my teachers I mean my students um, 
people say that? And I say, yes. But what we're doing is also training you just in discipline and in exposure. And, um, and, and I go back to discipline because the discipline is very important. That's why you go to school. Of course, a lot of those classes, you may not use that ever again, but at least you have the discipline. You know, you said, I can't do this. So, you know, I encourage people to allow their young people in their lives to explore that artistry and also to uh, open them up to other ways they can use their artistic talents um, that go beyond being uh, famous on TV or movies or even Broadway. But how can they use it? You know, as they get, because I think everybody should climb for that if that's what they want to do. But as you're doing that, what else can you be doing besides flipping burgers or something else? You know, what could you be doing to use that? And it has to do with being scholarly and saying, you know, I am a scholar and an artist. You know, that's what I have to encourage my students. I want them to understand you are scholars as well as artists, and you should nurture both sides of that. That's That's great. That's well said. I really enjoyed this conversation with uh, Professor Kathleen Bentley of SIUE, also director of the Black Theater Workshop, doing some innovative and phenomenal work over there uh, inside as well outside the boundaries. So we want to thank you once again for, you know, offering your valuable time and insight and wisdom to us in the words of great details and we love you madly. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're, <All right>. welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're <laughs> welcome.